Hello ladies and mental chain and welcome to another is it worth the gold video today we are looking at the VK4503 the German tier 7 premium heavy tank I am recording this video on 4th of June so not sure whenever the fuck it's gonna come out if uh, this tank is already gonna be on sale so I'm not that sh actually sure how much money it will cost but anyways let's just do the re replay well review and then uh we'll see we'll see when it comes out I'll like give my basic opinions depending on how much it will cost if it's worth it or not well anyways let's look into the armor so everything frontally is 100 mil upper plate lower plate turret front even the cupola front is 100 mil so well it's not all that great for tier 7 if you compare it with the tiger one that's completely flat 100 mil this is actually not too shabby at all um Kind of an interesting thing about this tank is that the upper plate is actually weaker than the lower plate. I mean, it obviously depends on the angle you're facing, but still, it is angled better, as you can see. Which makes, uh, well, unexperienced players are more likely to bounce off this tank, is what I'm saying. Because uh, the first thing you kind of learn in World of Tanks, if you see something German shoot it in the lower plate, and 160 armor isn't that much, but a lot of tier 7 mediums and below don't really have this amount of pen. And uh, let's be real, 163 flat, uh, you angle it slightly and even an IS could bounce off this if he doesn't get very lucky. Uh, in general though, this armor is not gonna withstand punishment for uh, from equal tier heavy tanks and higher tier anything really. I mean, it doesn't really have the armor, but it's not really that big of a deal in general and I'll tell you about all that a bit later. Anyways, side armor, 80 millimeters, pretty solid for tier 8, uh, of tier 7, sorry. And uh, it can side scrape reasonably well. This is obviously gonna be a weak zone when you side scrape, but you just gotta hope that your enemies shoot your side instead. You can get some decent armor values here though as well. When we come to the turret, this is the Stock Tiger 2 turret, is absolutely terrible at tier 8 and not much better at tier 7, I mean, like, as you see, not much really overextends, like, the 120 armor here. There are a bit better zones somewhere around the lines, I guess, where the angle is pretty silly, but, uh, in general, this turret is pretty damn terrible. The, the cheeks are, well, not the cheeks, but the sides of the turret from the front are auto bounce unless you are not facing directly at your enemy so try to face directly at your enemy at all times it's actually not too bad AD side armor in the turret and obviously the roof is going to be an auto pen for a lot of guns in this game all the night emails can auto pen this as well as the there's only 25 millimeters of armor here uh, but yeah that's pretty much all there is to say about the armor so let's look at the gun depression 8 degrees uh, front sides and to the back you get uh wait it's all no wait yeah it's probably bugged it's maybe it's just a 7.5 and it just shows up as 8 i'm not sure but uh anyways pretty good gun depression as well so yeah let's get into the game and see what this tank is all about so here is the game but as always let's jump into the stats first so 1400 hit points 380 meter view range top speed forwards 38 backwards 12 Far to weight 10.82, tank traverse 28, turret traverse is 22. And we come to the gun stats on this tank. This is the first 88 slash 90 millimeter gun that sh has the stats that all these guns should have along all the fucking tiers. So, first of all 1714 dpm, which is not great, but it's still not the worst out there at tier 7 on heavy tanks. 203 penetration. Uh, Aim time 2.2, accuracy 0.33, and really good soft stats as well. To put this in contrast, the super famous German sniper tank, the Tiger 1, has 2.7 second aiming time. Like, what the fuck? Like, this, uh, like, you remember the good old saying that the premium tank should be slightly worse than uh, regular tanks. Well, they fucking forgot about that saying with this tank for sure. And the tank's cost in gold is 7.7k, which is probably gonna make this the most expensive tier 7 tank we have ever seen. It's probably actually gonna be more expensive than quite a bit of the tier 8 uh, premiums as well. Which is really the only downside to this tank. It's in all different areas, it's... Like, you can almost compare this to a Panther 88, and this is a tier 7, it's a heavy tank. So, in a way, this is a tier 8 premium with a preferential matchmaking. I mean, you still have 1400 hit points. You arguably have better armor than a Panther 8, relatively for sure, as you don't really face all the tier 10s and shit, so... 
This tank is fucking nuts. I mean, it could mean a good thing that Wargaming is like, you know, looking to rebalance all the tanks and, you know, bring this in line with their big, uh, big rebalancing plans. But at the moment, this tank is just out of the line. This is by far the best tier 7 heavy tank with uh, an 88 or a 90 mil gun. Nothing even compares to that. The only tanks that come close to this are obviously the Russian IS series. And, uh, and uh, yeah, this is just out of the line it's not slow it's not sluggish it doesn't have a lot of armor but it can help you uh, and save you every once in a while especially against lower tiers which is what premiums in general are supposed to really do they're not really well there's no real premiums that can reliably bounce higher tier tanks and as you can see this gun handling is out of this world like seriously 2.2 second aiming time is something that you have not seen ever on these 88 millimeter guns this gun on the E50, the tier 9 medium tank, the stock gun on the, the E50 is the same gun that you use here, has fucking worse aiming time than it has on this tank. Like, come on, we're gaming. I mean, sure, as I said, this could mean a good thing as well. Maybe this is what they're looking into in fixing the general, like, just broken shit that is the German tank's aiming time, which is unnecessarily high for some reason. But, uh, anyways, this tank is actually nuts. And just you know prove my point let's bring out another comparison this tank is just slightly worse than the caravan the tier 8 british heavy tank you are faster you have better traverse you're more mobile slightly worse aiming stats and accuracy and but dpm is by tiny bit lower and you have higher alpha damage and slightly less health you know because you're lower tier but still like the, how close this thing is to a lot of the tier 8s as i said panther 2 and panther 88 are actually not that far in front of the VK4503 and the fact that this is tier 7 just makes it all that much better than those tanks. So if you have a badass German crew, the equipment I would recommend using for this is uh, rammer, ventilation and coded optics. As you can see the tank gets full view range, it has 380 but with British Schnamps ventilation and the view range skills of the commander you can deck it out to be, uh, to be full view range and uh, yeah, here we take our first damaging hit, and now we are in a pretty shitty situation. We have a Firefly behind us who's gonna shoot us quite a bit of times. The good news is the Firefly's DPM is not all that great either, but uh, I am being flanked pretty badly now, and I need to take care of this KV-1 first, and that was a really shitty shot to take. Fire and engine damage in one shot, that's really unfortunate for me. Now we have to pick up the Type 61 as well, so yeah. We gotta go into backward side scraping mode here. If the Firefly know what to do with this, he would shoot me in the turret, but he is either cannot see it or he's just a bit silly, I'm not quite sure. Meanwhile, our team has successfully managed to die, so... Well, not all of them. We still have the Nostron and the, the fucking Toaster left alive. I didn't really need to f track the Firefly there, but I figured why the fuck not, right? It's not like I'm doing anything else with my life anyways. And now, this is a bit of a no, too aggressive angle. He's gonna pen here, me here. The problem with facing a Firefly is that it uh, th does have rather high pen for a tier 6. But uh, we should be able to take him on. He is a 2 shot if we roll average. So that should work out reasonably well for me. Then we already misses me as well, which uh, makes a huge difference here. I'm gonna try to side scrape here once again. Uh, he is not playing horribly this one, because, you know, he's trying to fall back, but he bounces one of his shots, and that puts me in a pretty good situation to just rush forwards and kill him here. But, uh, yeah, what the fuck was that? I don't even know. So we're back in pretty shitty situation here. The Firefly does not try to rush me down. The reload on this tank is below 7 seconds. It's, I think on my configuration it was around 6.8 uh, or something like that. Uh, to put that in perspective, the Mutz has a really similar re reload, if not even worse. The Panther 88 reloads at 6.3 with the sa same gun. Uh, even less, maybe, like 6.1. And the Panther 2 is 6... Uh, uh, 0.3 second reload, but let's remember that all those tanks have fu fucking horrible aiming times So I have to try to catch this guy out and we do put one shot for free He bounces off my front and uh, we still need to shoot him twice. So this is looking pretty dodgy for me at the moment, but uh, Let's not give up just yet and see if we can pick up this D43 as he comes around uh, uh, He bounces two already and tracked me one with one and uh, the reload is good enough to pick him up, uh, he really didn't play that very well, but uh, hey, it's tier 7, at tier 7 you're likely to see people like this quite, quite often, let's put it this way. 
So you probably have realized that I am quite a bit of a fan of this tank. I don't think it is balanced. It's just flat out better than most other tier 7 heavy tanks, if not all of them. Which, you know, shouldn't be the case with a premium tank, but... Uh, but if this is the way they're gonna balance German tanks in the future, I, I'm looking forward to this. I definitely could see uh, these kind of aiming time buffs to a lot of the German guns, a lot of the German tanks. Instead of buffing and changing the armor layouts, they should really make these guns more... more predictable, more reliable. Like, you know, it's kinda annoying to play the Panther with like fucking 2.5 second aiming time and uh, shit when you're driving the biggest tank in the world uh, that everybody can hit without aiming at all and you do no damage per shot and shit like that. So if this is the way they are gonna rebalance the German tanks, I'm really looking forward to this. But if this is just Wargaming being retarded and, you know, making overpowered premium tanks, then obviously there's nothing really good to say about that. And here I potato on the artillery and now this is all uh, a dice roll. Let's play bingo, boys. Can Artie roll the bingo? I do get a critical hit on him in there and he does miss me, so... Rip in pepperonis, artillery player. You will not be missed and we pick him up. And that's the game! And here is the end plate. Ace tanker. Shitload of ribbons that I'm not gonna name. Uh, steel wall, high caliber, top gun, and cool headed. This was the first game I played in this tank on this account. That's where all the ribbons. So we did 4170 damage, uh, assisted 388, uh, blocked 960 as well. After repairs, we made uh, 87,838 credits. So uh, we did use an automatic fire extinguisher, so that drops down by 20k if you don't have those stacked up, so it, the profit was around 70,000 in the end. And we also managed to pick up 7 kills. So yeah, the VK4503, is it worth the gold? Well, first of all, it costs us significantly more. Will most likely cost significantly more than tier 8 premium mediums. It is better tank tier for tier than all of those mediums, no doubt about it. This is one of the most powerful tier 7 heavies, but Paying 35 euros for a tank like this is quite a steep price and also as you saw while it doesn't make bad credits but you get more for doing the same in tier 8 which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. And if you have to pick a tier 7 heavy tank you probably rather god get the IS-2 it costs 2k less and is if not as good as the VK-45 uh, then maybe slightly worse, slightly more inconsistent but at the same time it has those steamrolls games where you just press W and, and one shot the entire enemy team so it's kind of a tough ask. This is by far the best German heavy tank though in the game as I said so if you're all about the German heavy life you probably will want to pick this up but the money they ask for it is pretty damn filthy uh, so yeah I mean uh it's a definitely a really good vehicle, but the price of it is kind of off-putting, off at least me from buying it, especially with World of Tanks being in the state it is at the moment. But I hope you guys enjoyed this replay cast, and I'll see you on the next one.